Man, why did so many good games just come out like all in the same three day space? It's it's, it's hurting my wallet. <laughs> Everything comes out June 2019. Yeah. Thankfully, this is one. Yes, even that game. This is one that I got for free because we got a review code for this one. So thank you, Activision. I think it was Activision. It was Activision, right? I didn't just totally embarrass myself. Yeah, it was Activision. Good. CTR Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, which actually did quite a bit more than I was expecting because I wasn't really paying attention to the news. It's not just a remake of uh, CTR on PS1. It actually has all the Nitro Kart cl uh, characters and, and uh, courses in it. So that was a nice surprise because I've never played Nitro I Kart. I believe the, uh, the PS4 version uh, gets some special love compared to the, the Switch version, if I remember that correctly. Is it the Nitro Kart? Courses? I think it's just like a retro. It's it's like there's a there's an extra retro cart uh, a retro track and some like polygonal uh, character uh, skins and stuff and stuff and some stickers that are PS4 themed. Uh, apart from that, I don't think the PS4 gets anything extra. Ah, uh, okay. But I could be wrong. I believe it's I believe it's just like a special pre-order bonuses. Yeah, I think so. Well, I I did get the pre-order bonus as well. That's like the electron. Um, the electron yeah. costumes they those came with the code oh geez the loading times in this are just as bad as i've heard they are, are they are. really yeah i've heard that they that... i've heard that the loading times in this are man you know bad. i guess that sonic was... 06 desensitized me because that didn't feel all that long at all i'm playing on the pro by like... the way so that probably shortens them it was at least like 20 to 30 seconds so was it if it's any if it's if it's anything like the um the insane trilogy you'll get passed out in a month Maybe. Yeah, but, you know. A anyway, for this video, I figured we'd play a little chunk of Adventure Mode. Because, like, goddamn, I'm not doing a full playthrough of, <laughs> of a racing game. We, 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 I think we learned our lesson uh, back when we did F-Zero GX. But no, we didn't, because we then did Mario Kart. Oh, yeah, so... right. Yeah, we did 64. Yeah. Uh, I forgot afterwards. about that. Mm. I didn't know Let's that see, this... How do we learn our how do we learn our lessons if we forget about the commentary? <laughs> I didn't know that this game had a Diddy Kong Racing style arcade mode or adventure mode. Yeah. Though. Well, this game was heavily inspired. Uh, heavily inspired by heavily inspired, which on means is they literally recreated Diddy Kong Racing uh, race tracks <laughs> to test their engine well, they, with. They, they, yeah. <laughs> really? I think it was just I think it was just I think it was just one course they literally just ripped and just practice on. For the sake of getting mechanics yeah. down, but yeah, they did. Uh, they did go into that in interviews. Yeah, but uh, this version of it, uh, it has like, I think there might be some slight physics differences between this and the PS1 version. I wouldn't be surprised, but it feels fine to me. And like the one time the drifting failed me, which is like in Papu Papu's Temple, I think it might have failed me in the original also. And you have the brake slide for those tight turns, so yeah. <laughs> from what I hear from everyone that's played CTR in the 90s playing this game, they had no problem jumping back into it. It's basically the exact same game from what I can tell, which is great because CTR is great. Uh. Yes. CTR remains to this day one of my favorite kart racers in history. Yeah. Yeah, and and I, I love Mario Kart and all that, but CTR is like, if I, if I need a non-Mario Kart option, I'm likely playing CTR. Uh, well, they did add all the Nitro Kart uh, race courses, so I'm interested to try those out eventually, because I had never played Nitro Kart. I hear it's a good one, uh, but I, that, like, when I looked it up for this video, like, the only constant criticism I could find of Nitro Kart in particular was that reviewers at the time thought it was a pretty bog-standard car racer, which, you know... That's basically CTR in a nutshell. I, I can't complain if that's what they gave us. It's it's funny to hear that criticism, though, because it's pretty much the same criticism that Wrath of Cortex got, that they were just emulating Crash 3 and didn't do anything new, which is untrue, and the completely wrong way to criticize that game, by the way. I'm off to an aus auspicious start. <laughs> what, do, we, do, do we all have those games where, at the time of their release, were considered uh, just another run-of-the-mill game, just another mill sequel, and then maybe like 15, 20 years later, it's looked back upon and about, oh, you know what, actually, this is a pretty solid entry in the series, and I don't know why I ignored the first uh, one. Well, I could probably say that of Nitro Kart if I played it, but that wasn't what I was getting at with Wrath of Cortex. What I was getting at with Wrath of Cortex was that it did lo lots of different things, and they weren't very good. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah. <clears throat> so... CTR, 
It's a kart it racer. It's so good. It's a good uh, kart question, racer. Question <laughs> though, what's the team part of team racing, or is it just? There isn't. It, it's just the name. They didn't do. They didn't do any. They didn't do anything with teams until the other two games. Nitro Kart had like Team Bandicoot, Team Oxide, and Team Trance. Then why is it called Team Racing? I don't know. Maybe they had some team ideas and dropped them. Because and both the heroes and the villains have to team up. To stop. Uh, nitrous oxide. Not really. They're just racing. The they're planet. just racing against each other to see who's better, so that they get to see who nitrous oxide races against one on one. It's a, uh, yeah. It's it's a bit of a misnomer. Then it, uh, then there's there's crash tag team racing, of course, which uh which was the third sense. one, where you sort of bumped into people and combined cars with them, and it was a really cool concept. But like, no, the game was just not good. Um, I hear nothing good to talk about tag team racing. At like all. it has some, it has some good racetracks, I think, and the the, the 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 tag team mechanic is novel, but I think it says something about it that the only thing from Crash Tag Team Racing that made it in this game was some character skins and stuff. Yeah, the basically they ignored that one completely when they did stuff in this game. Yeah. Well, I, I've been hearing rumors that they they're even going to give that game some love in future DLC. Maybe. Yeah. Perhaps the, we have a good chunk of DLC already confirmed between Tana and Spyro and some other stuff. Oh yeah, the Spyro um, one's surprising to me because I mean it shouldn't be, but it is. Yeah, like the DLC for this one is uh, Spyro the Dragon as a character and with a car, I think maybe. There's In his own cup too. Yeah, then there's the baby, the, the, the baby character DLC. They knew what they were doing, and uh, and then the last DLC pack of characters is Tana and the Umbrella Girls from the original CTR, who are conspicuously I, I, absent I, in the base game. <laughs> I, th I I think it's the other way around. I think Tana and the Umbrella Girls are first. Um, maybe. I, I'm trying to think of the order that they were listed in on the the image that I saw before. I, know, I I'm I, pretty sure they weren't no. first. Spyro was last. Now, what is for it, what, sure. Yeah, what, what is it about Spyro's inclusion, Ted, that you find surprising? Um, that they they actually are doing the crossover with him because if I remember correctly, the uh, <laughs> Activision or whoever owns I don't remember I think Crash was owned by somebody else after uh what what was it like uh, Universal but before Activision he was owned by a different company maybe but I'm pretty sure but I don't remember specifically. Here's the thing but, in um. In Crash Twin Sanity, Spyro actually makes a cameo. Oh wow, I did not actually know that. Yeah, it, so it's like just a random, a random joke. They're in like a treasure room, and Cortex looks to the side and says, "This guy wants his gems back." And Spyro's just standing there looking all angry. And I think he burns someone to a crisp. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm su I'm surprised because it's a crossover that looks like people will enjoy. They also and did like a really terrible crossover pair of games on the Game Boy Advance, but there were like yeah, no, mini game collections. There, that's so. what I mean. It's a crossover people have been wanting for years, and it looks like they're doing one that people might like, which is weird. Yeah, like Link and Mario Kart. Yeah, no, they should have at least had an Olympic game first. Right. <laughs> no, please, no. No, not, 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 not Olympic games. They have to be different. The World Cup. Anyway, yeah, this, oh, is, this right. is something that the original CTR did not have. I'm pretty sure, like, they introduced it in later games, maybe. But Honestly, I'm not as big of a fan, at, at least for this kind of style of game, of the... I guess, um, well, you're going through paint jobs, which is cosmetic. So it's all cosmetic. But the only oh, it's all cosmetic. The, the only okay. stat differences are between what characters you play. Like Coco here is a bit slower than Crash, but has more acceleration, and Crash is just the all-rounder, as you would expect. Okay, then yeah. that's fine because I actually did not like how I think it was Mario Kart Seven started the different cart type cart pieces as opposed <laughs> to yeah, I get you. just carts. Because it's just, I feel like it's too much to try to put together it does, for a game that's supposed to be pick up and play. Like it this. does add to, a bit to the confusion. The the, uh, the only stat differences are the characters, and that was in the original CTR, and that was that was uh, something to get used to while you were playing single player as well, because uh, you could, I think play adventure mode as the different characters in the original as well. Not all the different characters. I don't think they they let you use bosses, but hmm. Do they let you use... If it's just cosmetic, then I don't... Uh, yeah. Then that's fine, but it's... You know... I mean, I could I could go on a couple of rants about the different issues I have with some of the, <laughs> the, the newer Mario Karts, but that's not... I, I can imagine, right now, yeah. So. <laughs> uh, I don't know, is it? 
Well, you see, that's kind of the thing. I feel like Crash is one of the only series to, you know, do a kart racer spinoff, but keep its own identity during it. Whereas, it feels like almost every other character to try to do this, uh, even Sonic, it's yeah, all felt like you. this is just a Mario Kart clone. The only other kart racer I can think of that has its own identity, uh, other than CTR, is Diddy Kong Racing. And I suppose maybe this game loses its... Um, loses its identity a little bit when you realize that it's trying to copy Diddy Kong Racing more than Except Mario Except, when Kart, you think about it, CTR is kind of Diddy Kong Racing, but better. So... Di yeah, Diddy, Diddy Kong Racing's main thing is that it just had a big adventure mode. And, you know, planes, really. Yeah, yeah I, I never really have been a big fan of Diddy Kong Racing. And, you know... In recent years, people were like, oh, Mario Kart 64 actually sucked. And I'm like, no, Mario Kart 64 is actually still pretty good. Is it old? Yeah, it's old, and it's aged like hell, but it still has, like, some of the best tracks in the series. So yeah, I don't yeah. want this Mario Kart 64 hate going on in my timeline. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Get that crap out I, of I, here. I think where CTR particularly shines is that it has the adventure mode, but it's a very focused game on what mechanics it has and doing those mechanics really well compared to either doing Mario Kart, which is just the races, or Diddy Kong Racing, which has the adventure mode but feels a bit disjointed. Yeah, there's very little gimmicks in CTR's design, uh, which I like it because it's it's just pretty much straightforward. You know, th th there's not much to get with CTR in terms of like the drifting mechanics, the course design. It's really just, just you got a cart, drive on a road, go at it, get better. <laughs> yeah. Basically, because I remember uh, this game giving me some hell, 100% uh, in the adventure mode. CTR has some really good courses, but one of the, it also just has the the pure satisfaction of being really fun to control once you get a, get the hang of it. And I, th uh, I, I to me like comparing if we're gonna compare CTR to uh, Mario Kart, I actually like the boost mechanics more in CTR than I ever did in Mario yeah. Kart. Yeah, and the. It, it, one of the things that people did praise about Nitro Kart was the power sliding mechanic, which I don't know if it's any different than the original CTR, but one of my favorite things is just sl just drifting, sliding through a drift and managing to get that triple boost, because the tracks don't always yeah. let you do that, but when you do, <laughs> it's it, it, it's it's great to pull off. Basically, your you power slide into your exhaust smoke becomes black, and yeah. then you hit the boost button. There is, and then you can get up to three levels. There is also the brake slide, which if you need to pull a tight turn, you can you can do that without losing too much speed. If you just do a very very quick brake slide, which is a satisfying trick to pull off as well. But I still haven't mastered that. One thing the original CTR didn't have is all these goddamn character skins. Chef Engine. Yeah. <laughs> Frickin' goddamn. Hey, I appreciate it. You know, it gives me more reason to Princess play the game Coco to go with Coco stuff. Park so that she could make fun of Princess Peach. Um, speaking of Coco. I thought I thought I said you will not have a new character, Coco. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, no. I, I think the uh, the only characters that you'll unlock during the adventure mode are the bosses, which is as it was in the original game. But there's a bunch more characters in this one. Most of them are from Nitro Kart. So if you're wondering who the weird goblin people are, yeah, they're from Nitro Kart. Um, and there's Entrance is from Nitro Kart as well. Was the Nitro Kart stuff? Uh, implement it into the adventure mode, or is that strictly multiplayer? I, well, not strictly multiplayer. You can play them in the single-player arcade as well. There might be, like, Grand Prix with them in there. But, uh... I don't think it's in adventure mode. Okay, so it, it's strictly one-to-one, -one, the PS1. Account. Yeah, I think so. The, um... Okay. Uh, the slight disappointment about the Nitro Kart stuff is that Nitro Kart did have its own adventure mode, just like CTR did. So, uh, they don't... They haven't they haven't included that here. So you're not going to get Crash Bandicoot Space Adventures with the Emperor who wants to race the guy who beat Nitrous Oxide or whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, they kept doing story modes for these things. <laughs> hey, you know what? I don't, I don't mind it. I like stupid stories and spin-off games. Well, okay. The, uh, the story mode for CTR is, okay, this, is this space alien wants to, wants to race the 
the fastest racer on the planet, and if they don't manage to beat him, he'll turn the entire planet into a concrete parking lot and make all of you his minions. Okay, first of all, how are you going to enforce this, buddy? You've got one spaceship with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he ever establishes what kind of power that alien ship generates. He just says he's gonna uh, do it. I, I assume he's just acting on on faith that they'll uphold the end of the bargain. <laughs> Dude, okay, I mean, one of these racers is Dr. Neocortex. I don't think that's in the cards. I mean, thinking about it, cards. Cortex has like an army of mutants and ships and stuff and crashes a apparently a platform master, I, I suppose, in theory. Why don't they just, like, beat that guy up instead of racing? I don't know. They, were, they, they, they want to beat him at his own game to humiliate him. They were in the middle of a, of, of, of a racing tournament when Nitrous Oxide showed up. Why Cortex was participating in this, I'm not sure. But... <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe they were all just, like, super glued to the seats of their carts and couldn't get out, so they just had no choice. <laughs> That's my headcanon, just anyway. Just Oxide won it. <laughs> Brake slide. There we go. That's what I was talking about. That last turn in Papu, in Papu Papu Pyramid, always always sends me sliding into the grass, and I have no idea why because it, it doesn't look any tighter. What you got against polar bears? Okay, so question: Since I don't know much about this game, how different are the Mar are well, How different are the items compared <laughs> to Mario Kart? Um, like, are actually, the the items I would say are a bit tamer than in Mario Kart. With the exception of the blue shell equivalent, which is a lot rarer, and can, like, bulldoze through any racers who are in its way on its way to the first place player. So if you're, so that's like... that's more yeah, like the uh, 64... Uh, yeah. um, Items are nowhere near as important in CTR as they are in Mario Kart. Yeah. They're, okay. they're, they're there to spice things up every now and again, but most of the time you're focused on purely racing. I... None of them are real game changers. I think one of the things that's different about the remake as, as opposed to the original C CTR is that you actually spend a little less time tumbling around when you get hit by one. Uh, but I could be wrong. Just someone on Twitter pointed uh, that I would out. say it's more or less the same, really. Mm. Well, it does depend on how many Wumpa Fruit you have, too. Uh, when you have ten Wumpa Fruit, it powers up your power-ups. So that might actually make them hit harder, for all I know. Oh yeah, that's right. I did forget the items are enhanced. Yeah. Uh, when you get to a certain. The fruit do speed but, you up too, so. Yeah. But is there like a green shell equivalent, a red shell, a banana, that kind of uh, stuff? So red sort shells of. are the missiles. Yeah, and you do, but, and you do uh, have missiles, little potions that you can hold missiles on. Missiles don't have as uh, the ho missiles don't home as well as red shells because if they if they go through if they hit a wall that uh, they're exploding. Yeah, I mean, you can also like use your your bombs, your beakers, your TNT crates, nitro crates to to block missiles. When they're after you. Well, you could do that with bananas too. Right? Yeah. Uh, Mario. Yeah. So, so it's so just like there are, are there are more options are here for that. There are more items that you can do it with. You can shoot your bowling bombs backwards and that kind of thing. You can just there's two different types of crates and then there's two different types of beakers. Yeah, they're 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 similar enough, but like I said, they're nowhere near as important to the overall race as they are in Mario yeah, Kart. Mario Kart is much more about how well you can use the items than how well you can actually race. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which, which is why I always felt Mario Kart kind of suffers as a racing game. Well, it's not really a racing game. It's a it's a anger simulator. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> it, it's one of those. You know what? I haven't been angry lately. Well, let me put up Mario Kart. And it's one of those cases where the developers really want it to be more of a party game than a competitive game, which is the kind of mentality in developers that pisses a lot of gamers off. But uh, yeah. Is there a competitive mascot racer? I'd say this is about as close as you're gonna get. It's not a mascot racer, but Excitebots on the Wii is a really good racing game that has a similar kind of kinetic energy to a kart racer. Um, it, it was the sequel to Excite Truck, which was one of the Wii launch titles, but Excitebots is like 10 million times better. And the whole point of that game isn't to win first place necessarily, it's to get the most points. And you get points by like doing tricks or crashing people or winning mini games during the race. Like there's a point in the in some of the races where you'll get a bowling ball and you have to throw the bowling ball at a at a row of pins in order to score points, and then you get stars for that. And the person with the most stars at the end wins. And if you get first place, you get a, a large star bonus. But you can get first place and still lose if you're just ignoring everything and only going for speed. So uh, that game is one of my favorite racing games ever. 
So you should play that one. And I feel like it could be relatively competitive. But uh, rip Nintendo Wi-Fi connection, so you can't really play it <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Got a set of a private server. Which is an excellent segue into something that the remake adds that the original didn't add. Online play, obviously. So, yeah. But you gotta have, yeah, you gotta have yeah. something. Like we, that in, in we, game. I think uh, four player local racing is still accounted for here. I hope so, because, yeah. because consoles have four, don't need their little stupid boomerang multi taps anymore, but. Well, I mean, a lot of, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's in this game, but many games with multiplayer have straight up just stopped adding. Mm. Um, local multiplayer because it's too expensive to program the split screen, right? So they're just like, okay, well, we're right. just gonna be playing this local anyway, so why bother? Yeah, like the only uh, the only system right now where that would be a, a given on is the Switch because the Switch has that, you know, you can all bring your switches out and set set up your tiny little screens in a party room. Uh, selling yeah, point. Yeah, you know, you just, whenever you go to the airport, you just go up to the nearest millennial you see and then hand over your, your you sideways Joy-Con. And you're like, we're in a commercial right now. Play with us. <laughs> <laughs> Is there cross-platform uh, multiplayer in this? Or no? uh, I have no idea. Uh, I don't know. Honestly. I haven't looked it up. I, it didn't occur to me. I mean, it... it if there is, they probably just like censor out the PS4 logos and stuff when you put those on your cart. But yeah, I don't know. Probably not. No, uh, the game is not crossplay. Yeah. Okay, that's 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 fair. It's it's less common for that to happen anyway. Given so. how much of a stick up their ass uh, Sony had over Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, on their console, but they, they, they did bend for that eventually, didn't they? I don't remember. Okay. Hmm. But either way, not surprising. Not surprising. Yeah. Most games don't really have it, so you know it would have been nice, but no deal breaker really. Yeah, I think the only the only games where you can really like always expect that to happen are MMOs because they all connect to the same servers. But. Ugh. Okay, Dingo Canyon. The racetracks in this game, you might notice, are lacking a lot of the weird gravity fuckery and transforming vehicle shenanigans that a lot of kart racers started to use later on. Yeah, uh, for some reason, <laughs> for some reason, I find the lack of that additional fluff refreshing. I might be the only one to think of, to, to think of it that way, but you know, sometimes it's just nice to have a racetrack. <laughs> Driving on a, a flat track. <laughs> I mean, when you think. Well, I mean, this isn't flat. So. What? Well, I mean, to be fair, like the the the, the Team Sonic games, uh, they've been doing that since the uh, the first All Stars Racing. You know, yeah, but nobody like, cares I, 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 about I, I, that game. It doesn't, the, it's it's relevancy is not an argument here. <laughs> it's whether or not you know they did it or not. So. I mean, I, again, like it's one of those things where, like, I look at the. Team, the Sonic and Sega All-Stars racing games, or Team Sonic Racing, or whatever the hell they're calling it now. And, I mean, granted, like, people say, oh, you know, these games, I'm sure those games look well-made enough, but there's nothing about them that makes me think that I should play them other than, oh, it's got Sonic in it right now. Or... And it's like, okay, if I want a racing game with Sonic... I don't want to Okay, be yeah. So <laughs> Which so is superficial, but Sonic you know. is Sonic is one thing, but you know, like I think All Star Racing Transformed had that guy from Shenmue, which made it like the only Shenmue content we got for like twenty goddamn years. <laughs> yeah, but it was it was like sixty percent Sonic and yeah. forty percent other stuff. Which is probably why they just went to Team Sonic Racing for the third game and gave up trying to be the everything game because it's like. Uh, yeah, we're not even acknowledging all of our other franchises in our kart racing game that's supposed to be about all of our franchises. So, yeah. So if, teams, so if Craft Team Racing did the reverse, what other Activision properties besides Spyro should we put in here? Uh, Tony Hawk. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Tony, Tony Hawk's existential nightmare. I don't, I don't think Tony Hawk <laughs> as a character is an Activision property, but... Well, I think they have, I think they still have the I think they still have the license to make you know 
Tony Hawk game. Maybe, but... Call of Duty Soldier? Oh, yeah, you could have one of the guys from, like, Modern Warfare. <laughs> Ramirez. Yeah, Ramirez. Yeah, get Ramirez. Ramirez <laughs> Just, you know, a uh, Call of Duty soldier hunched down in a, little, 12 different in a little, in a little army-themed go-kart. Sure, why not? I, I'd buy it. I mean, I mean, more as, like, DLC and add-ons to this game. <laughs> uh, that would what be funny. Activ- what, el- what else is Activision known? I can't think what would be a first-party Activision title, if such a thing even exists. That's yeah. You're you're not wrong. I don't think Activision is a company known for its IPs. No, I always thought it was a third party develop, uh, publisher. Mm. But uh, hold on. I Look like. I up. mean, it's weird though because they owned the biggest game, the biggest name in gaming, for ten years. Yeah. Or so. But you know, uh, to what's on screen, they really improved these cutscenes because in the original. It was just like Papu Papu would ride up in his car and bob up and down at you as he talked. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot more charm there. A lot more charm. Well, the team, this is the same team that did the Crash uh, no. trilogy. No, it's not? It's not Vicarious Vision. It's not that much right now. Okay, well, they're, they're using a lot of those assets. It's Beanox. So. Beanox, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, you just don't care. Same art style and assets, but a uh, different team. But as charming as I like the cutscenes, the bosses have always been rubber banding bastards. And, uh, oh, that's, <laughs> that happens in every kart racer. Yeah, so, I know. To be fair. But, like, it's, it's especially frustrating in the bosses because the boss is the only one you're racing against. And whenever they're in front of you, they're dropping an endless stream of... of, of, of beakers or TNT crates or something. I had to try this like 10 goddamn times to win it for this for this recording. Thankfully, uh, I, I decided to take mercy on you all and not make you watch all of those retries, so you're going to get one failure and one win. But it was a lot more frustrating while I was playing it, and that's that's just CTR in a nutshell, man. I, 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 I remember... Yeah, I've, heard that, I, I've heard from people who have the original lot and this one they say that this game is slightly harder than the original well slightly harder in that the AI is a bit more complex but um, they also have d- difficulty modes for adventure mode so oh, that's good. It, d- it depends on yeah, what I know game I know in the, I know in the original you didn't really have difficulty modes yeah uh, actually in actually they, they sort of uh, had their, have their cake and eat it too in that because when you when you first boot up classic mode you have two settings you have classic why did I say classic mode? Adventure mode. When you when you boot up adventure mode, you have two settings. Ow. Uh, one of them is classic, which just puts you onto a standard difficulty uh, adventure mode where you can't change your character or your cart at all after you start it. And then there's um, Nitro Fueled, which is what I'm playing now, which lets you change your character and your cart at any time during adventure mode. And uh, lets you choose between easy, medium, and hard. Oh, that just sounds like a better mode overall. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but, you know, for people who want that genuine PS1 CTR experience, uh, you can have your classic adventure mode. Fair God, enough, Damn I it, suppose. Papu Papu. The thing about the boss is that once you fall behind, you're basically fucked. <laughs> you might as yeah, well... That part, that, that, because that, they, they spam items. Yeah, that part I remember from the original game. Well, yeah. y- you know, I have homing missiles, but I'm not using them right now because they'll just hit the walls. And yeah, it doesn't look like there's a lot of places where you can get a clean e- shot. Even, a, even, if, even if I was close enough to use the missiles, you know, he's throwing beakers at me every two seconds. So unless I, like, fire off all three at once right behind him, I'm not hitting him with those. <laughs> I probably should have just let myself lose because it turns out when you lose, you get coins for the shop, which is something that I could really benefit from because the shop is too expensive it's the one complaint i have with this game is that like uh the pit stop shop which lets you get some of the uh unlockables it has these has like costs like a thousand or something coins per everything they change up their deals every day and to get the really good ones you need like three thousand but you win these at a rate of like uh Maybe 40, 50, possibly more if you play the the more advanced Grand Prix, but I haven't gotten to that point yet, so I'm not sure. Uh, it might be something, because in a lot of games like that, um, you get way more for playing online. Uh, maybe. Like you either get more per race or 
you get a multiplier if you win a certain amount of races in a row or stuff like that. Maybe. Um, which is actually so it's something worth checking. I haven't I haven't actually gone online yet, so I can't com comment on the the gameplay there. I generally stay away from online multiplayer unless I'm sure I won't make a complete ass of myself. But um, uh, they do have like a limited time event thing where there are certain unlockables you can only get by playing the online grand prix. But those unlockables will become available in the pit stop shop um, after after the events are over and done with. Oh, that's how Mario Tennis Aces. Yeah, some, something like that. Like, if I remember correctly, you would, like, unlock characters for Mario Tennis Aces if you played the grand... if you played the events at all. Uh, that was the only requirement. Just playing one, one, one match in the event, and there's your character. Yeah. But, uh, in this case, it's, it has to do with points that you win while doing the event. And if you don't get enough points during the event, well, you don't get the thing until you can buy it from the pit shop later. And I would totally be all over that, except I'm playing Judgment right now, and I don't have any time or energy for anything else. <laughs> uh. oh, there's like fifty. There's like fifty thousand games. That's what we were talking about. There's yeah, so many games came out right now. Bloodstained Ritual games. of the Night. <laughs> Too many games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's 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 what we call irony. But um, yeah. So Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, Judgment, and CTR are my games right now. And I'm pretty sure I missed a few that I'll want to play later. Ugh. Goodbye, Papu Papu, and good riddance. You can replay the bosses. I don't know why you'd ever want to, though. Isn't that guy really easy in the actual Crash, crash games? In, in, yeah, cra in, one, yeah. yes. in Crash 1, Papu Papu is the easiest boss in, 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 ever, ever created. And CTR, he's the second boss, and he's the first hard one. The first boss is Ripperoo, and he's not as much of a pain because you can actually just spam the hop button to get TNT crates to fall off your cart. So. Why were you keeping a live chicken up your loincloth, dude? You never know when you might need an emergency appetizer. You'd have to take time to roast that, though, and defeather it and skin it. And every. That's. Bold of you to assume he would not eat it alive. That's a good. I mean, yeah, there, there is that. That's a good point. Papu Papu does seem like that kind of person. Anyway, uh, there is more than just racing in CTR. CTR also did that Mario Kart 64 kind of thing, where there's an actual battle mode rather than that bizarre hybrid battle mode that Mario Kart 8 tried to foist on us. Um, is it any good? Yeah, yeah, it's quite good. Oh, cool. Awesome. Because but they use the, the battle, battle mode, mode arenas for other challenges as well, like these purple, like these purple crystal challenges, where you have to race around the arena collecting all the uh, purple crystals. And the challenge from that comes entirely from the entirely too tight timer, where you need to find out the perfect. You, you need to basically trial and error your way around the the arena, finding the perfect, um, finding the perfect route to get all twenty five crystals. So uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna see what that's like, and see if it's as much of a bitch as it was back in the day. Spoilers, it is. Oh, I never liked the crystal challenges. <laughs> <laughs> the crystal challenges was always just a pain in the ass in the original because like it, it's a it's basically any sort of collectathon challenge you would get in a platformer only you're driving a car. Yeah, and, and you're timed. Yeah. Yes. The uh, the real challenge for these is that some of the crystals are in weird places and you have to maneuver your car to a specific place in order to get to those crystals. Like you have to jump off a certain ramp or drop through a pit and get the crystal on the way down. This one actually isn't that bad by the standards of these crystal races because it's only the second one. But I still... Oh, oh it's only 20 crystals. Okay. Okay. I said 25 because that's the standard number in Crash games, but now 20. Thank God. <laughs> you can use the bowling bombs to get the TNT crates out of your goddamn way. And that's the only reason that, that item boxes exist in this game. I'm doing this in completely the wrong way. 
<laughs> no, this is the true CTR crystal collecting experience. I yeah, uh, the the good thing about the pit stop shop in this game is that you actually get something when you lose these goddamn things, which you're going to be doing for a lot, a lot of your playtime. So, you know, now 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 you're not completely wasting your time when you don't manage to get the crystal. So that's cool. Aren't these things like hard to get? in the actual games and now there's just like 20 of them well, well i around. mean i mean hard to get in quotes yeah they're just sort of laying across your path in the level there's like one level at the beginning of crash 2 where you might possibly miss it because they put the crystal on the fork in the road and you you might just go the other way but that's the only time they ever do anything like that hmm oh come on i think you can still get it nope <laughs> so <screw> it. <laughs> okay, that was just the best way to go out. <laughs> I like the the voice clips that they added. Like Coco shouts at people she passes while she's riding to while, while she's racing. Get in the slow lane, buddy. <laughs> so they they've added more lines yeah. in, on top of the original yeah. stuff. Yeah, pretty sure. Did they talk in the original? Yes. Mm. They would. It's, it's often limited quotes, but they did trash talk each other when you were uh, yeah. falling behind or uh, uh, racing past someone. My favorite was probably Cortez. He was like, the trophy's mine! Because like, he assumes that he's speeding by the opponent when you're probably just going past him like five miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had a, that, that was the thing that, 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 that managed to make CTR stand out at the time was that it had a lot of character. Um, we didn't get that from Diddy Kong Racing, not at all. And see that, and um, I guess you could say it's kind of like the Sonic the Hedgehog to Mario's Mario. Uh, <laughs> very, very much so at the time, yeah. Yeah, because we had a lot of we had a lot of attitude and humor and character in CTR, and Mario Mario Kart, for as awesome as Mario Kart is, is Mario for better or worse, and that means it's very uh, bland. <laughs> In its way. Well, I mean, I mean Mario Kart 64, they had, uh, they had quotes, didn't they? No. Uh, well, they, well, they sort of. They would go like, <laughs> oh, and stuff like that. <laughs> like, I think, like, maybe there were very short, like, I'm a winner kind of things, but they they didn't really, like, talk um, to each other. They just They didn't emote very much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm getting at. I almost made it. Uh, look, the other two crystals that I missed are taunting me on the screen right now. They're like right there. The camera froze looking at both of them. That... Yep. Fuck you, CTR. No, please buy this game. <laughs> you don't get anything if you do. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this isn't a sponsored video. This isn't an ad. No, it's not. We, just got a, we, we did get a code, but we, this is not We, we just got a review anymore. code to look, look, look the game over with. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Still... Let's not get ourselves on a blacklist just yet. <laughs> Preferably not. <laughs> the B and BSC stands for blacklist. What, what does the S and the C stand for? Scratch Scratch comms. comms. <laughs> okay. Blacklist I mean, scratch asked. comms. That's... Hmm. That doesn't flow well at all. No. Anyway. So, like, CTR <laughs> is totally awesome, but I'm not going to win this course before the video ends. So I've just been I've just been <laughs> wasting all of your goddamn time uh, by doing this crystal course. But damn, doesn't it look pretty? Yeah, I yeah, could have. This, this game look this game looks really nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, it's got lens flare like to suit a Steven Spielberg movie, but apart from that, J.J. Uh, Abrams, J.J. Abrams, J.J. Abrams. I mean, I'm, I'm, oh. it's actually it's really nice that this game looks because I'd say this game looks about as good as um, the. Insane Trilogy, and that game's a very constrained type of game by design, and this is much more open, as you can see, but it still looks really nice, so I appreciate that. Which means the the eventual Twin Sanity remake is going to be fantastic. <laughs> that was a thing in the original PS1 games, by the way, The that CTR, because it was wide open, tended to look a lot worse than the Crash games it was based on, so I'm glad to see that they're, that they're on even graphical footing now. What a time to be alive. 